Today we're looking at 3D photography and stereoscopes. A little bit of retro, also a little bit of classic design put back in the modern world. Some of the things that are helpful with a stereograph is to show the 3D elements so coming from left to right. Now a true 3D camera, there are many of them out there, have the cameras, lenses on multiple sides of the camera. But the 3D photography had some of those big old uh, aspects where you had to look through a big wooden scope and you had a picture offset and had the two different dimensions and the pictures at a different setting where the camera was actually photographed two different frames. Uh, and then you actually had a distance where your left and right eye were covered. And that did mimic the 3D aspect. That's a hundred and some years old. That's from the late 1800s, early 1900s. Now the VR headsets have made it a little more of a retro comeback. As we can see two images side by side and get that 3D scopic effect. But the stereograph doesn't need special headsets, it doesn't need special viewing, it doesn't need things to be printed and you kind of make your eyes look cross-eyed. Some people create subjects where they have multiple cameras next to each other. Uh, but the idea of a stereoscope is to take a one-eyed camera, manicular, and to take it and photograph it at different angles so it's moving side to side. Now the key is to keep it so it's steady, it's not up and down in a wavy pattern but to keep it steady, and I found keeping it on a burst can help. And nowadays you have electronic shutters that can shoot 20, 30 pictures per second. I wouldn't shoot it at that fast a rate, but if you put it to five to eight pictures per second and you put down the burst and you're moving side to side, that can work pretty well. That gets the idea of looking at the subject from different directions. Now the Lytro camera came out about 2011, 2014. It was making a push for a three-dimensional camera where it actually photographed in multiple points at the same time. Now then it actually truly had a 3D element. Downside is it's been discontinued. Uh, the technology failed. It was a huge investment that just didn't go anywhere. And since about 2018, 2019, cell phones have taken that similar idea of using computational photography in the multiple camera lenses to kind of give that three-dimensional choose the focusing after the fact, which is actually pretty amazing. But because the camera's moving back and forth, you're shooting a sequence of images, and I shoot usually more than three images. You only need a three image sequence, but I'll usually shoot a burst of maybe eight or 10, and then I'll choose the ones that I want based on how much action. Now, to get more of an effect, you can have more of a gap between pictures, so you can have a closer range. Now, composition is still important. You have to make sure you're not having distractions in the scene. I also find that having super narrow depth of field, something like an f1.4, 1.8 aperture, doesn't work as well. It helps to see a little bit more of the background in focus. If the background gets so blurry, you're just kind of having this moving, blurring background, and it's not doing much. So the background elements, I would say it has a middle to moderate depth of field, f4, f5.6, so you're getting something in focus as you're doing that rotation. Also, I do not recommend the subject moving. If the subject moves around a little bit too much or they're an action sequence, it's not gonna work. Having those retro cameras, so the classic cameras that have multiple lenses, you could do a moving subject because you're capturing all at once. But because you're capturing the same subject and the camera is moving, a moving subject doesn't work very well. It really does, doesn't sell the effect as well. So for starters in Photoshop, we need to go ahead and open the photos, but first we need to make sure our workspace is in the motion setting not essential. So I change to motion settings, that opens up a timeline. Now we'll go ahead and show you my pictures. Now I shot a number of different pictures along the way in the process of going back and forth. And so I went ahead and narrowed out the ones that I want, the three pictures from left, center, right images. And what I did, I also went ahead and made them in order one, two, three. You don't necessarily have to do that, but it helped me more organized with all the pictures I shot for left, center, right, I guess this is left, center, and right along the way. So my style of movement will go from here. Now this one isn't as drastic as the other one. And then from four, five, and six, it's a pretty big move there on six. I need to go ahead and open up my image sequence. I'm gonna go ahead and open all three images. It will open up, keep in mind you need the motion timeline as well. And then I need to go ahead and drag them on top of each other. It doesn't open up that way. I tried a few different ways and it wasn't working. So I need to use the move tool. I can use the move tool here in the toolbar. I hold control. It will temporarily give me the move tool. I click and drag over on number two. And I'm not gonna let go here because what that will do is it's now gonna line it in an off-centered manner. I don't want that to happen. So what, what we want to do is go ahead and take it from here. Control, you are the move tool. Hold shift 
and shift will make it centered in the frame. Now the images are the same image resolution so it fits perfectly in the frame. I go to image one, I go ahead and hit control and shift, hold here for a second, hold shift, and now they are aligned perfectly along the way. You see here in the bottom corner layers one, two, and three. I can see the differences of the different layers. So now I have my timeline created, I have my three layers in here. Now we need to go ahead and create my video timeline. So I can create the video timeline. And by default, you probably get this set up. This is a different timeline. I find it not quite as easy to work with, in my opinion. Uh, I went ahead and went to the bottom here, this little three dots, and it gives me this classic idea. Set of the timeline, it gives me classic three dots where I can see a pretty simple layout along the way. Right now, the first one is for five seconds. I'll change that in a second. So what I first did is I want to go ahead and take my layers. I'm going to unlock by clicking that lock button. I'm going to name this one layer two, or just two, because this is image two, just for clarity's sake. Double click in here, hit two. This one was the one from number three, so I'm going to click here and hit number three. This one is number one, just to keep my layer orders, because it doesn't keep them in the same order as I drug them, and that's kind of confusing, I guess, too. So I've got all my different layers here and the movement of the pictures. Now I need to align them. So what I do is I go ahead and take my image at the top, and I turn it down to about 30 to 40% opacity, something like that. I zoom in. There's many different ways to zoom in. So I click away so the opacity is not being edited. Zoom in with Control-1, Control-plus, or the zoom tool, however you want that to be done. And we can see now that there is an overlay on image one. Now I can use the move tool, or I hit Control, and the arrow keys is the best way to kind of keep it horizontal. I'm using the arrow keys. I can hit Control-Shift to go 10 pixels at a time, or I can hit control and arrow key to go one pixel per arrow click. So I write control, uh, control shift to get me close, and then I finesse control and arrow keys left or right, or up or down, just to align. I'm looking at the heads. I'm not so worried about the bodies. There was a little bit of movement in her arm, which wasn't ideal. Move it to about there. The heads align pretty good. Sometimes the heads or the eyes can be a good way of lining it. Go ahead and turn that one back to 100% opacity. Turn the layer off. Go to layer number three, turn that one on. Go ahead and turn the opacity back down, that 30 to 40% range. Make sure I'm clicking away from the opacity screen. If you're not careful and this opacity screen is here and you're using control and arrow keys, you'll start to control the opacity. That gets confusing. Back to number three. Use control click for one pixel at a time. Aligning the heads. I'm more worried about the heads than the bodies necessarily. I want to get the heads aligned the best, they were probably perfectly still, about like that, put the opacity back to 100%. Now I've got my orders along the way. If I want to fit my picture to view, I can hit Control-0, Command-0 on a Mac, it fits it to view. Now I can see my sequence. And at some point, you'll see some overlap uh, between these bricks here aren't quite aligned because now I've shifted the pictures over a little bit. I do need to move that crop in a little bit. So I take my crop tool and I'm going to go ahead and drag in. You can see this line here where that arm is in there and the bridesmaid is holding the um, veil. I want to crop that a little bit. Something about like that. Crop that a hair just if I want it a little tighter. Something like that. Rule of thirds is nice. Still have the veil. Cropping out the elements that I don't want. Now I go ahead and turn the layers on and off and that's getting that sequence of effects along the way. So what I want to do is the middle image was two. I like to start in the middle image and then I can shift from right to left, right, left, or on my timeline. And I'm going to hit the new button here. This is using layer two. And I'm going to make this one to layer three. So we turn this on. So now this number image two on the timeline is layer three. And I'm going to actually go ahead and make it so it's 0.2 seconds. I found 0.2 seconds was about right by clicking this little five. I can change the time. Some people like 0.1, some people like 0.2. I thought 5, 0.5 was too slow in my opinion, uh, about like that. And then I want to do a new timeline to create the third image and turn image, so an image two, so it's going to go left, r middle, right, middle. Now I'm going to go ahead and create a new piece. Now I'm going to turn that on for layer one. And what this will do, it's actually going to cycle through. So you're going to go from one middle image, this will be image three, image two, image one. It'll cycle back here at image two. 
So it's going to cycle through. And the key here, I have it on forever, so it's going to continue to cycle. I'm going to create the GIF. I want to get the movie. And go ahead and hit play. It's going to go back and forth. It has a little bit of motion because the veil is moving. Our hair is moving from the wind, which actually looks pretty good. And there's a little shift back and forth that says going three, two, three, three, two, one, two, three, two, one, two. Back and forth. It's giving some of that motion along the way. Now, I'm going to go ahead and stop this preview. Now to export the setting. This is another couple settings I ran into. I go to File. I can do Save as a Copy. And I can save it as a GIF that way. This worked with the animation style in mind. I could also save it as an export. And I could do a Save for Web Legacy. And I could choose a GIF. The problem with a GIF is actually 256 colors. It's an old file. It can only do 256 colors. So it won't look quite as nice in terms of the color detail. There's not as many colors as the millions of colors today. But I can do a GIF this way through the legacy, export that setting, and it would also work and have the animation. What I ran into, though, if I go to the third setting, I go to File, Export, and I do Export As, and to make it a GIF this way, it actually wouldn't animate. I tried this a couple different ways, and for some reason, it wouldn't animate. If there's something I'm doing wrong, let me know, but I don't think there is. And I go to GIF, and it actually would export as a simple standalone GIF with no animation involved. If you want to make it a video file, you can also go ahead and export it as a video. Go to File, Export, and you do Render as a video, and then you can make it into your MP4 video as well. So it gives a video format to bring into your nonlinear editor and edit your video as well, or to play it in a video type sequence.